Over the next few sessions, we are going to be working on a fairly large intersection corridor model. On my screen is a striping plan, giving you a better idea of where we're headed. I have a large north-south street here. This is called Primary Street. The street includes two through lanes on the right and left side. It also has a series of left and right turn options. There is also an east-west street. This is called Secondary Street. Secondary Street has a single through lane on the left and right with a series of left and right turn options. So this is where we're headed. Just for a second, let me flip over to another drawing. Here you can see that I've built the corridor for half of this intersection already. Let me hide some of this geometry. I just want to give you a quick tour of the data that we have. I'm going to open my layer panel. I'll click the layer freeze button. Let's freeze the surface and the corridor model here momentarily. First of all, I have a pair of alignments. I've got an alignment here called Primary Street. I have another alignment called Secondary Street. If I back up and pan this over, you can see that I have pulled surface profiles for these alignments. I have also created finished grade profiles. Here's the finished grade profile for Primary Street. And right up here, we have the finished grade profile for Secondary Street. So that work has been taken care of. Let me pan this over. I have a few other alignments in this drawing. None of these have a profile yet at this point. I've got alignments on all the returns. Southeast return, here we have the Northeast, Northwest, and Southwest. I have a pair of alignments to the outside of Secondary Street. This is the Edge of Traveled Way right and Edge of Traveled Way left. We'll be using these in a little bit. I also have an alignment that represents the crown for Primary Street. That is because I am transferring the crown from one side to the other through the intersection. This alignment helps me do that. Just for a second, let me go back to my striping plan and we'll back up. So my alignment for Primary Street runs right along this lane edge. My crown at this point is one lane over, so the crown follows this edge. I'm using the lane to tapered median subassembly part to do that. Once the crown gets here, I have a crossover to the other side, and from here on the crown matches up to the location of the alignment. Let's go back to the corridor model. Let's zoom in here. You can see that I have several assemblies. At first you may think, man, that, that's a lot of assemblies to model this. It is, but really I've only got two. You know, all the rest are copies. I've got primary street crown left. This creates the crown one lane to the left of my assembly insertion. And if I come up here, I've got primary street crown normal. This creates the crown right at the location of my assembly. All the rest of these assemblies are just derivatives of these two. You can see primary street crown normal, no curb gutter left. Primary street crown normal, no outside lanes. Let me turn my corridor model back on. I'm going to open the layer panel and I'll choose layer previous and then I'm going to select my top surface here for a second. We'll just hide this. We'll change the style to no display for a second. I will then select my corridor and quickly let's just go to edit targets. This will highlight the region areas. So this first region is where I use the first assembly. Let me mention that I ordered these assemblies in the order that they occur in the corridor model. Just trying to make things easier if somebody follows along behind me to identify how I set this up. This first one represents my crown to the left with no outside lanes. If I move up, this whole area is primary street crown left with the outside lanes. The outside lanes follow my return targets. Let's take this down a little further. Here's the exact same assembly, but no curb and gutter on the right side. Here's the exact same assembly, no curb and gutter on either side. And right here is where I'm targeting that alignment to pull my crown over until I get to here. Now my crown is at the normal location, no curb and gutter on the left. Once we get here, I've got crown normal with the outside lanes following those returns. And then when I get down to the end, I've got crown normal with no outside lanes. So we'll be looking at some of the workflows used to build this part of the corridor as we complete the corridor for Secondary Street. Another thing we'll be touching on is flattening out lane slopes. It's very common in Florida in areas of the intersection to flatten out all the lane slopes to 0.5%. I'm doing that through the use of super elevation. We'll also look at how we do that. Just for a second, we'll simulate it. I'm going to select the corridor and I'm going to go to section editor and then we'll start stepping through the sections. You can see here that I, my inside lanes are at 2%, outside are at 3 As I work my way down through the corridor, here we can see the outside lanes are showing up. As soon as those show up, you can see that they start to rotate up. They'll rotate up until every lane is at 2%, and then all the lanes rotate up until right there we're at the intersection at 0.5%. Let me step through. Here's where the curb and gutter starts dropping out. Now we're in the intersection. 
as we travel through the intersection. There's where the crown moves over until we get to the other side. Now the curb and gutter comes back. At this point, the lanes start rotating down until they're all at 2%, and then the outside lanes continue to rotate until they go back to their 3%. The outside lanes close in, and then we reach the end of the corridor model. Let's close the section editor and return to model space. Our goal over the next few sessions is to complete this project by defining the corridor model and connections for Secondary Street, and we'll get started in the next session.